Good morning, folks. Today we'll be looking at earthquakes, a new ESA cloud monitoring mission, a forecast for grand solar minimum, and a good comment on Earth's magnetic field models. But we also have space weather, with more likely to be coming, so we'll begin with the last 24 hours on our star. Multiple M-class solar flares erupted from the central sunspots. It appears we have at least one and maybe two CMEs heading for Earth, due to impact as we head into the weekend. Let's go ahead and review some of those here. First was a double flare complex near center disk. This one had a very faint CME signature, but it is visible as a weak halo. NASA's Enlil Spiral had a reduced breadth representation on their model, but it is going to make impact. While NOAA also had a partial representation of the eruption, forecast to impact tomorrow night. Only a few hours later, a slightly longer duration flare occurred, and NASA has that one on the Enlil Spiral this morning, a second impact forecast. We await an update from NOAA today, and with two CMEs likely on their way, we continue monitoring the large sunspots for more flaring events. They are big and have a bit of magnetic complexity, and once again, there are still more incoming from the limb, sunspot number to remain high for a while. Magnitude 7 earthquake struck offshore of Japan overnight. A tsunami warning was issued, but only minor waves were observed. Lucky there, and that no significant damage was reported. Yesterday, we had also highlighted the swarm in Southern California, reached magnitude 5 with dozens of smaller quakes. That has continued into this morning with dozens more. Still watching this area closely. First article today is for Earth Care. The ESA's new cloud monitoring program with advanced satellite tracking and observational capabilities. This one is already offering much more variable and highly detailed looks at the cloud systems. Link below to some of his first images here. Up next, an interesting study that identifies a small fraction of the known solar forcing pathways while suggesting we are due for a grand solar minimum in the middle of the century. This forecast is generalized and cannot get specific without the polar magnetic field data to come, but it does predict that significant cooling will occur at that time and will continue through the end of the century. Not surprising to the observer community there. Last but not least, we spent a good bit of time recently discussing the failures of modern magnetic field models to represent reality, and here's yet another example. The data from just the new millennium shows how the models fail to identify local rapid fluctuations of the field, like we were discussing in last night's video. The importance of actual observational data reigns supreme once again. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone